wombats are usually nocturnal, but we find that uh, sometimes, especially during winter, they will come out during the day and they will graze. The, their eyesight is, is very poor, but what they are always doing is listening and constantly sniffing the air. The hearing is, is very, very acute. This is the wombat's closest living relative, the koala. It shares ancestors with the wombat. They both have stubby figures, short tails and backward facing pouches. But wombats eat grass and koalas eat leaves. When Australia dried out, eucalypts and grasslands replaced the rainforest which once covered the continent. Koalas became selective feeders on tough gum leaves. They digest leaves by fermenting them in very long intestines. Wombats use a similar system to digest some equally tough grasses. The kangaroos adapted differently to their changing surroundings. They're the gypsies of the marsupial tribe. While koalas and wombats stay near home, kangaroos travel to find the more tender grasses that they need. They're born for a life on the move, a life of alertness and reliance on the group. Lacking the cast iron digestive system of the wombat, they have to wander the grasslands to satisfy their gourmet tastes. Eating the lower quality grasses doesn't necessarily mean eating more. Wombats grind their food very thoroughly with teeth that continue to grow as they wear out. Their slow digestion and sedate lifestyle means that they need to eat less per kilo of body weight than any other marsupial grazer. But they're not as slow moving as their broad beams may suggest. Top speed for the 100 meter sprint has been recorded at around 40 kilometers an hour. At birth, the baby weighs only half a gram. Here, at three months, it's a hundred grams. Its eyes are closed, but its ears are unfolded. Its limbs are developing. It's as long as a human hand and firmly attached to its mother's teat. Six weeks later, its eyes are just open. It has whiskers, but little fur. It's still firmly attached to the teat. There's a scattering of fur on its ears, but almost none on its growing limbs. By six months, the eyes are wide open. When it wants to, it can free itself from the teat. Over a kilogram in weight now, it's quite furry and will take an occasional peek out of its pouch. At seven months and two and a half kilograms, it ventures on a truly perilous journey out of the pouch for the first time. For the time being, it's enough to explore its mother in the burrow.